What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today with more Railroads Online, and how's it going, Heist? How much money you got? Dude, uh, doing pretty well. I've got $1941, so, okay, you know. Okay, 1941, okay. What's the next engine? We, we need a goal here. We What's do, our next goal? We do need a is goal. The, is the Mosca, is that what it is? is Mosca, that... Mosca would be cool. Mosca would be fun, uh, and actually, I think it would be really fitting, because... Uh, Mosca was originally supposed to be a locomotive for the Ned Run Rio Grande, but ended up getting bought by the East Broadtop in Pennsylvania. And just today, the East Broadtop, when we were recording this, actually posted footage of their first steam engine running uh, since, God, probably over 10, 15 years ago. They finally completed the restoration of the 16, so uh, they've got steam back in service. So it'd be good to honor the Broadtop. Uh, All right, well, the Mosca is, like, other than the Eureka, the Mosca is the next cheap engine. Um, the Eureka's 2,900, but, like, we'll get one of those eventually. Um, but the Mosca is, is 3,600, so we'll have to make a little bit more money. Um, I guess onward to the lumber camp. We're going to get lumber and supply it to the ironworks. I heard rumor, right? I heard I've heard some device. rumors, too, yes. I've heard some rumors that cranes actually are automatic now, so... Yeah, we need to go uh, test that out. I also heard another yeah. rumor that uh, I'm going to need everyone to be silent for here. Let's go. Oh, the smoke chuffs. The smoke chuffs and the, the, the chuffs are synced to the wheels, but Kume, bro. Bro. It's four chuffs per evolution, not three. <laughs> Isn't it always? It, I couldn't even tell that it was three, honestly. You you have like a, a super sensitive ear for this. I couldn't I even do. tell. It's so critical to the operation and like, it's how you tell how fast you're going, at least for me. You count um, chuffs. I, I count chuffs and this is me being a musician, not me being an engineer. I count chuffs and I know wh how many beat per minute is right. a certain speed based on the wheel size. And so, you know, okay, well it's the speed limit. And people will come up saying, I think you were going a little fast. And I go, no, I know precisely how many beats per minute. I was doing 14 chuffs per second, sir. I am yeah, not exactly. going too quick. Thank exactly. you very much. 14 chuffs per second. Would be really fast. Oh, I don't know. That but seems yeah. really fast. That, yeah. would be, that would be, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's fine. Uh, so, um... Uh, might as well start off the episode quickly here. Uh, drunken Grizzly Bears. Yes, um, the Drunken Grizzly Bears. Yes. We ended off in the last episode was Drunken Grizzly Bears. I don't know yes. what we're... So, what so you, you told the story about seeing a, a picture of the corn in between the tracks. And, and yes. it's just filled all the way through the rails. Hold on, um, let me, this is going to be a good one. Let me just... Uh, did you, did, could you hear that? Did I did. Did you just pop open a cold one? I, I, well, it, it's a it's a can of pop. I'm not. It's not alcohol. Oh, so, okay. You know. Well, that's. I mean, at least you're not violating rule G. It's fine. So, anyway, uh, so Montana. Many train things happen in Montana, particularly on the BNSF. Right. I had a coworker who was a, a management trainee back when I hired out on BNSF, uh, whose dad had worked for the railroad for a long time. And so this is a story from his dad out of Montana, out of the Haver area, Haver, Montana, H A V R E, because. It's spelled weird. Anyway, um, so they had a train derailment. They ES indeed, and they like sent a bunch of cars full of like grain or barley. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was a you know covered hopper cars that are full of some kind of multi grain deal. Uh, used for making alcohol. Used used for making alcohol or bread or whatever. Anyway, right. so they derail these. The cars get punctured on the way down. Uh, it spills everywhere, so they come. MOW comes with the big hook. They rerail the cars. They scrap the cars that need to be scrapped, and and get all the bits cleaned up because you have to do that and whatever. But they didn't go after every last drop of grain because the product is no longer good. It's been spilled all over the ground. It's dirty. It's mixed in with everything. Shipper doesn't want it. End of you know end of the game. There's no point in them trying to <laughs> recapture all of it. So they just right. leave it. And what happens to grain uh, when it sits out? Anyone? Yeah, Anyone? It, Con? it it it, um, it ferments. Yes, what the, correct the points. Ferments. So the the grain ferments, and uh, the the bears had been coming around to eat the grain because hey, this is free. This is literally a free railroad buffet. You know, thanks, Mr. Right. Buffett. You gave us a buffet. Uh, <laughs> and so the bears were eating the grain this whole time, but as it fermented, uh, the bears would start to get drunk. So these grizzly bears eating enough fermented, you know, mash, basically, which would end up making whiskey or beer or how, whatever. How does somebody know that a, a bear is drunk? Like, well, you can't, you, well, you so walking loopy or something? So, or is that... walking loopy, and they really wanted to take a nap. And where's a good place lot. to take a nap? On in Montana. Tracks. 
on the train tracks because the rails are heated by the sun. So the rails make a nice little oven to make a nice little blankie for the bears. And oh so God. they would they would get drunk, they would go to take their hangover nap on the on tracks, the track. and then BNSF yep, was hitting them with trains. Oh so much God. so that they got sued over it because they were killing so many. <laughs> They it's got kind sued of, over the drunk grizzly bear. They got I sued mean, over okay, the drunk because like, they didn't clean up their accident all the way. At least this is the way the story was told to me. And there, there may be some amount of uh, high, uh, you know, uh, don't let uh, the story. I feel like they might have know, hit like one things, bear but... and then everyone complained about it. You know, like I don't know. Right. Like, how many bears do you have to hit? Before Who knows it a national where problem, uh, where the truth know? is with this? But uh, definitely a fun story either way. But yeah, that's the the drunk grizzly bears on on the BNSF in Montana. That's amazing. So. All right, we let's lumber, test this crane yes. theory. If this doesn't work, I'm gonna be so mad. I got a comment about it saying like, "Yo, cranes are automatic now, and you need to check it out." And I've heard that it is, and you have to spot pretty perfectly for it to work. So let's oh, make good. sure we get uh, spotted right, up stop, nice in the middle. Stop there. Yeah, yeah, you're good. I need to back up a smidge, actually. All right, you're right in the middle. All right, I'm gonna turn yeah. these on. I think I clicked them both. Okay, let's see. Let's see if it happens. What it? What's it gonna do? If is this happens, just... I mean, so it doesn't. Okay. Uh, it won't save us any time, really, but, I mean, we can go do other things. Oh, he's oh, still going! Did you God. click it? Yeah. No, I did not did, click it. I'm just watching in it? third person. Oh, yes! Okay. This is amazing! This is the quality of life we've this been dying the, for. I mean, they need to be faster now. They need to be, like, yeah. you know... Let us upgrade little... the speed so that we don't have to sit here and wait for this animation the entire time. But at time. least we can just kind of, like, you know, not not have to click over and over again and break our, our mice just Dude, from... Dude, like, seriously, I had to buy a new mouse because of Railroad's online. Just kidding. The question no, is, will it auto-stop, though? That's the... That's I've heard that it, it load it to full and then stop, so... Um, now, this is what exciting, about, what actually. About the, I guess the mines wouldn't be as big a deal because they've got those gates, but I wonder what the mine does in this case. Oh, probably interesting. The, probably yeah. just the same as before. I can't imagine they change because the mine you pulled down and pushed up, right? Maybe, so, it, maybe the flow will stop automatically when they fill? Maybe? I don't know. That would, that would be nice. But I, mean, I, I don't, don't know. want to waste stuff, but... Yeah. Well, this is convenient. This is definitely a nice quality of life change. I'm frustrated that the chefs aren't synchronized. That's like uh, I didn't even I honestly didn't even hear it. That's I like Steam Locomotive hear, 101, literally. But that's fine. I couldn't hear the chuffs. Okay, so so hold on. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Is the crane gonna stop? Crane stops. Okay. Crane now stops. what happens if I inch forward to the next? Does it just start up again, or do you have to reclick? I it? think you have to reclick them. But yeah, just bring it For forward. You car. got another car and a half to go, Con. One car and a half. Yeah. Yep. Now it's one more. And a half car now. Quarter right, car. Pull, pull on the brake. Uh, yeah, that ought to work. All right, let's see. So they don't automatically start. So I click them. And now I guess I mean, we wait and see. This isn't bad. I'm I'm not gonna complain. About I am this. really not gonna complain about this. I'll complain about the chuff sounds until I'm blue in the face. But that's. I fine. will I will complain if this doesn't. Oh, oh there it, it is, going. man. That's oh, that's wonderful. That is oh, actually that's so great. Blissful. Now I can just sit here and enjoy my beverage while the train yeah, does all the yeah, work. Yeah. Cheers, Con. Cheers. Yeah, dink. So um, I get a lot of comments. I got a lot of comments in the last video. Um, you know, because I I read some comments, and we're gonna keep going with that because it's nice when people have questions. It it is. You know, stops me from ever to think of questions. Uh, so I got one uh, top-rated comment. This is this is top-rated. Oh boy! Okay. Okay, and this is this is where my community is at. So they said you should ask Heist the following: A. Is your refrigerator running? <laughs> yes, it is. Thankfully, yes. B. Your feelings about the narrow gauge big boy? <sighs> cursed. Just is it an actual cursed. thing? Did no, there, 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 big... there was never an narrow gauge big boy. Um, if okay. you are a long-time viewer of my channel. Um, you'll have seen that I've run the real big boy on three foot gauge in another train game because it's just train fixed to spline and there's no physics so you can do that and uh, it's the cursed just overhang the, the side overhang and, and it's it's cursed and hilarious that was actually my 10,000 subscriber special almost a year wow. ago uh, so <laughs> very fun but uh, very cursed and no they didn't have one in narrow gauge the biggest the biggest narrow gauge engine I've heard of um, that was like three foot gauge or meter gauge was a uh, the Brazilians had a, like a 2882 that was a tank engine still, but it was um, a bigger version of the Uinta articulated. It's half car con, quarter car, five on foot. On brake. Uh, oh, yeah, perfect. Yeah, that'll do. Yeah, so I've seen those. Um, and then in the States, I think it was the 2662s that the Uinta railway had. Um, right. 
but uh, those are the biggest I've heard of. So they're not nearly a big boy, but definitely big on the narrow gauge. All right, and then the third question was, what's the meaning of life? 42. Yeah, okay, well, that was the answer that people gave. That was my top-rated comment. Like, isn't that... Isn't that, isn't that <laughs> Vibes, okay. One that, train question you know? and two slice of life questions. I'm here for it, you know? Uh, yeah, so someone also said... Uh, what was the other thing? Oh, my God. I have so many comments now that I have to... Yeah, like, drunk grizzly bears. You ask for comments. Oh, okay, here we go. Comments. This is a good one. What is the worst thing you've seen happen at the museum, and what is the most common failure you've dealt with, either at the museum or when you worked at BNSF? Oh, man. Those are actually two really good questions. Worst thing I've seen at the museum... I mean, it, I guess... It or I depends. guess let's say worst thing you've seen on railroads in general, because I'm sure you, the BNSF might have some worse, other than the giant yeah. poop-filled diesel engine. Yeah, the poop-filled diesel engine was the thing. Um... At the museum, I mean, like thinking of worse things, we had a suspension failure on the 491, but I didn't see that happen, and that was just a pain in the butt to fix. Um, 491 tried to kill me once by rocketing a part of her boiler off at me while I was doing maintenance on it, which is one of the one of those darndest things that you wouldn't think is capable Wait, of happening. What? But how were you doing maintenance with like the boiler under pressure? No. Like, that so that's the thing. Okay. So I guess we'll tell that story to start here. So um, you need to take her head two cars as well. Uh, yeah, I'm, so I'm there are kinds of bolts that hold the boiler together. They're called stay bolts. And usually okay. they're threaded into both sheets, the interior firebox sheet and the exterior sheet. That's the outside of the boiler. You can see one more car, half a car now, and another 10 foot. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. That might work. I don't know. We'll see. Um, okay. That'll do. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that should work. Anyway. Um, but the thing with those kinds of stay bolts is that they're very rigid. They're called rigid stay bolts, and they don't allow for any freedom of pivoting as the boiler grows and expands. And so early engines were made extremely with only rigid stay bolts. Hold, hold on a sec. You said they're threaded on both ends. Threaded on both ends. They're like a stud. They're threaded into the exterior sheet that you see on so the, the outside, sheet, and then the, the interior sheet. Is, like the sheet itself is tapped, and then they thread. Correct. Like the sheets to get, is this a modern thing or is this how they did it back this in the day? This is how they did, actually, this is how every boiler still is, as with these kinds of stay bolts. Um, I mean, every oh, boiler has some, um, but definitely an, an early way, but, but it's for the state area in the firebox because when it's the boiler that's a circle, the barrel, you can just rely on the hoop stress to hold everything in. But when you try and make a flat sheet, you need to hold that flat sheet flat. And so you make a grid of bolts that holds it together. And so we have rigid stay bolts, and then there's a flat sheet on the outside, and then the interior, which is the firebox sheet, so your fire is on the other side of it, and there's water in between. Um, and then they made a more modern type of stay bolt called a flexible stay bolt, where it's only threaded into the interior sheet, and then on the exterior sheet, it's just got a really big head that rubs up against the sheet. And then there's a, a nipple, pipe nipple, that just goes around it outside of it, uh, and then that has a cap on it that seals the pressure. That'll do, Con. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm trying to... Uh, should, uh, that should... That might... That probably work. We'll see. Um, the stopping thing gets a little bit harder. It when does the as the load gets, uh, gets bigger and bigger. Yeah. Um, anyway, so the flexible stable head allows the sheet to pivot around it. If you only had one, think about it. It's rammed up against the head and it can pivot any way at once. It can't translate it can't move because of the hole on the head but it can pivot and so that right, allows us assuming you have more than one it's not going to move like correct that would be... but it does allow for the growth of the boiler to happen without uh, as much stress because you have that little bit of freedom right okay and so some engines got a ton of these and most modern engines actually are primarily these style bolts but 491 our big chuchi that we run only has about 40 because she's actually got a pretty old boiler because the way they made the kit 37s anyway so they added these uh as a whole thing and so they hadn't been taken off since 1961 she last ran in 1963 the last time they were inspected was 1961 and every five years of service you're supposed to inspect the heads and make sure that they're all acceptable so you have to take the caps off and so we we're taking the caps off for the first time and anyone who's ever taken apart something old that uh, hasn't been taken apart in a long time, and particularly when you think about heat cycling and things, should know that they do not want to come apart anymore. 
So Are they I, press fit at all, or is it literally just tap? Like, if it was all brand new, you could just screw it in and maybe put, like, 100 pounds of torque on it or something? Or, like, is it... So, um, the inner sheet is tapped and threaded, so you thread the bolt in, and yeah, I don't know what the torque spec would be. Probably just as tight as you can get it, because that's the torque spec on most steam engines. Um, and then the, the sleeve goes on around it, and then there's a cap that goes on that. So I'm trying to get the cap off. I'm not trying to get the bolt apart. I'm not even right. trying to get the bolt. I'm just trying to get the cap off to inspect the head and make sure that you haven't wasted away and broken. That'll do, Connie's the last two cars. Um, and so I'm trying to get these apart, and I tried like 16 feet of wrench, believe me. I tried cheater pipes on the end of wrenches on the end of like all this stuff. Couldn't get it. So I go get the Resbo torch to heat the, uh, the caps and try and get them come off. Ah, yes. Always heat up metal within metal. That's going to be good. Yeah, well, I mean, that's that's what you have to do. You have to make them swell a little bit, and then you can get it. This one didn't continue. That's weird. Is it too close to the... I don't know. The front one worked, but the... I mean, it's, like, spotted almost perfectly. I don't know. Bugs. Whatever. Let's see. Um, so... Yeah, we'll have to see. Is it going to go now? What? Oh, okay, yeah, there it is. Yeah. Weird. Anyway, uh, so I'd been heating these and then getting them kind of like a dull cherry red, and then you could easily spin them off because they were so much bigger and they swelled off the threads. You know, we've been listening to you talk about these bolts for like five minutes. I haven't heard of the exploding bolt hitting you in the face yet. That, so that's uh, that's where we're about to get to, Con. Spoilers. Uh, oh, okay, so, well. <laughs> so the cap is, they're about quarter inch thick. They're designed to hold 200 PSI, and they're, they're I mean, they're pretty heavy. They're about a three inch diameter, so they're pretty solid. Um, <laughs> and so I got to the bottom one and my coworker had told me he drained the boiler all the way and he hadn't there. The main drain yeah, is actually not at the bottom, in, but he hadn't drained, but he hadn't drained the boiler. The boiler. Yes. All the way. Because <laughs> wait, what? That one didn't finish. That it last didn't finish either. loading. Weird. Yeah. Um, and so you have to take some extra plugs out and stuff, which he didn't. And I didn't bother to check because management at the time was really trying to rush us and it was not a good safety culture. So we didn't check. Or blame management for well, everything. I yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd blame management any day of the week in, uh, in that era. But anyways, I digress. Um, so uh, I get to the, the first one that was in the water space and um, somehow I still don't understand the mechanics behind this. I had the torch on the cap for like 20 seconds and every other one took like a minute minute and a half to get hot so i had it like 20 seconds um it didn't change color didn't do anything crazy but the water must have flashed to steam on the inside and built enough pressure rapidly that i mean it sounded like somebody put a shotgun in front of my face and let it go it perfect it rocketed Did the bolt snap at all or the, the, the cap, cap the cap just rocketed off uh our roundhouse is five stalls so if you could fit five trains in it and we were in the first stall and the cap ended up at the fifth stall all the way across the shop, like 150 feet away. Um, and that would have been a good trip to the hospital if that would have- I would have uh, been dead. I, yeah, it was right probably. in front of my face. What happened was it rocketed off and it hit the flange of the drive wheel and then it bounced out. Had it bounced in, it would have gone through my face. I still have the cap. I'll try and get Mickley a picture of it so that he can show it on, on my, uh, my thing. And you can ask me if you want the picture too for your video. Um, it put a huge dent in this solid piece of steel. Uh, so I would have been like hole in the head, D-E-D -E -D dead. Um, my boss came running out from his office, which was in the soundproof visitor's gallery, behind closed doors and everything. Closed visitor's gallery door, closed his office door. And he was checking on me because he thought the acetylene tank exploded. That's how loud it was. I had a radio. I'm, I'm, I'm very curious about the physics of how that me that too. Worked. I would love to know because it was terrifying, and it doesn't—it yeah, doesn't, it doesn't like, make it doesn't objective make sense, sense because no. the water should have been able to expand into the boiler. So why did this do? Yeah, this? like why would it expand yeah. towards a bolt when it can go and just into, fill the boiler into with the steam. giant boiler? Yeah, I, I don't unless understand. Unless your boiler was already at pressure, but it wasn't. No, it was, it was so. almost entirely drained, and it was cold. So it doesn't make right, any makes, sense. Yeah, but that makes really no sense to me. Anyway, the last little piece on that is uh, this is actually the reason I have tinnitus in my right ear is because. Uh, about like 10, 15 feet away, I had a radio playing and the explosion shockwave blew the speakers out of the radio. That oh, was perfect. how powerful of an event this was. And so it blew my eardrum out. I couldn't hear anything for about five minutes afterwards. Um, but like the good little grunt that I was at the time, uh, I went through and I took the rest of them off right afterwards. 
um, and then, and then, terrified, and then but you know, came out and said pranked you. And, you know, no, I yeah, I don't know. So that's a um, firecracker. That's behind easily the one bolt or something. my uh, my worst thing that I've I've seen. Yeah, I had PTSD over using the acetylene torch for years after that. Um, anytime I had the torch on, I was physically scared and I would get shaky uh, because that I almost died. I mean, it, it's it's an amazing thing, and I can't believe in a, that it happened, and I'm lucky that I didn't. But that's that's just, my worst thing. Didn't so. you just um. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's nothing really you can do about it. It's like, the cap is just big, so if it rockets off fast enough, like, it's just There's nothing. Hurt. No, I mean, it, it disappeared. It was an instant, like, I just hear a bang, and then there was just pipe nipple with yeah. stables inside, and I had no idea where the cap was. My torch got blown out. I don't even remember shutting the valves on the torch. It was an instant response, but the, it, it had blew the flame out. Um, yeah, I will never understand exactly how that worked, but, uh, yeah, that's that was the worst thing I saw at the museum. What was the second part of that question? Uh, I don't remember. I, I, I was trying to think about it. Oh, uh, yeah, most common failure. Most common failure of locomotives. Oh, so, I mean, steam engines... Most common engines, failure in trains in general. Steam engines, uh, thankfully, I mean, we do so much to maintain them. Uh, we don't end up having too much of a failure. Usually the failures okay, you have... Okay, but what's the part that wears out the most? Like, my thought would be, it would be bearings, right? Like, bearings would wear out Actually, faster the, than the anything else. the bearings don't wear that bad. The, the part that wears out the most is the water glass. You actually need to replace the water really? glasses, the, the glass tube in them, most frequently on a steam engine. Or something, or? No, it uh, as you open the valve to check the level by bobbing the water level, it, it starts to erode the bottom of the glass out till it gets too thin, and then it breaks. Um, they're supposed to make it 92 service days, but we actually had one break at like 35 service days on 491 at the end of Polar. It was funny. It was the last, days? the last day of Polar Express, and she broke the water glass right in front of everybody, and it was like. That was terrifying too. That was something that we had never if, seen if, before. We had if 50 the water years. glass breaks though, right? Right. Like it's connected to the boiler just with like like a tube at the top and a tube at the bottom, so it shows you the level of the water in the boiler. But Correct. Like, if it breaks, does boiler water just start leaking out through the glass then? Like yeah, that... exactly. The the, the tube it literally exploded. just starts like just gravity just forces all the it's water not gravity, out of the boiler. It's 200 psi. <laughs> I mean, it's behind pressure. <laughs> oh my God. So um, it becomes a steam jet then. Yeah, so I mean, ridiculously so. But thankfully, I mean, our Rio Grande engines are equipped with a Sargent safety water glass where the glass actually has a second set of glass around it that is shields. And then it has a separate drain tube. So there's the water glass primary drain and then there's the shield drain. So that if this happens, you don't get steam in your face. Uh, early water glasses didn't have that. But they came up with this pretty quick. Um, do they have this, a shutoff? Like if you they like do. If this yes. happens, then you could just turn it off, and then there's Precisely. no you have no level indicator. But at least yeah. you're not getting steam. you're not getting you're not losing water in the boiler, and you're not blowing water everywhere. Right. And so yeah, we shut it off as quick as we could. Um, and you, I mean, you have to test those shutoff valves every single day, and this is like the most critical thing you can do. You need to verify that you have water going to the way to measure water, right? Like if you don't have water, you have a bomb. So that's right. the most critical thing. So we ended up did continue to run that day of polar, but that was only because we still had two ways to measure water. We had the tricox and a second water glass. So we lost the primary glass, but it was like, this is the last night. We'll get it replaced. And it's, it's actually already been replaced despite the engine not being in service yet. So we should uh, flip this over and run the main. Yeah, we should there. actually run on the main. You know, do yeah. the do the thing that we're supposed to. Even do. though I've been trolling slowly because you've had some stories, so I've, I've, just I've been had like, some you know, stories to tell. Yeah, we can't run at track there's speed. There's no reason to go much. super quick here if you're just you got stories to tell. It's a pretty small delivery as far as things go, but we can also hump at the end though, just to really. That's true. Like, yeah. You know, I I do love humping at the end, so. Yeah, it's always it's always good. Yeah, that's great. I never you a million years I never would have thought the water glass is the thing yeah, to wear out. That's the, the that's the thing that wears out. That's the most commonly replaceable. I, I, mean, I honestly would never have thought that. I would have thought that the glass would have just held up like, you know, forever, right? Like it wouldn't it wouldn't care, but Nope. Yeah, it uh, it erodes away pretty quick. So um beyond that, like on steam stuff, I mean yeah, the rod brasses tend to get hammered pretty bad. So if you're running a lot, if your daily trip is really, really far, yeah, okay, you're you're gonna be doing brasses more frequently than your big rebuilds. But right. I mean, that's, I mean, for us at the museum, that's, we don't run that many miles, so it doesn't really affect us. So, I mean, we'll do rod brasses like once every other overhaul, you know, every 30 years, <laughs> pretty much. Um, yeah. So it's just kind of one of those things. But, you know, if you're running tonnage, slogging up the, the railroad at Cumbrace or whatever, I mean, they, they do bearings and brasses a lot more frequently. Um, oh, I had another question too. Someone said, sure. uh, 
this, which is, this is kind of a, probably a quick answer. Someone said, Heiss, what does Kenosha actually smell like? <laughs> it's, it smells like hard liquor. That's the joke. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, so, so Kenosha, people think of Wisconsin because of uh, reasons and whatever, but. I don't understand this whole Kenosha reference. So, like, it's just like, so it's this just like... is, this is the stupidest of inside jokes of inside jokes. Okay. Okay. So, um. you and your like five railroad buddies and like. Three yes. Other people get yes. Their... Oh, okay. Yes. Perfect. And then okay. now, now of course it's on the internet and everyone on YouTube, uh, at least on my channel, many people have picked up on it, but it always gets a question because people don't know about it. So. Kenosha Pass is part of a rail alignment that the Colorado and Southern Railroad operated. Originally the Denver, South Park, and Pacific that we have some equipment from in the game. Um, and 346, which is one of our engines that was leased to that railroad, ran over Kenosha Pass a lot in the 1930s. Uh, and in 1936, her engineer ES indeed uh, and binned, binned 346 pretty bad. Um, he hit, he hit a, a sharp curve doing like 40 mile an hour after they had been running as a helper. So they're running light downhill. Um, the fireman was terrified and jumped off, but the engineer didn't seem to think there was anything wrong. Hit the curve going like 40 mile an hour, they estimate. Uh, and it was a 25 mile an hour curve, but the track was also in bad condition, apparently. And he, and he, he died? And like, it, 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 it rolled over. Uh, she rolled over bad, totally ruined the locomotive. Uh, the engineer was pinned in the cab, and he died three days later of burns from being burned to death by the steam that was leaking and everything, which, oh, talk about a crappy way to go, man. Um, not fun. But the the joke... Oh, crap. Uh, Can you like this switch up here? This is, a, I can't. This is an unfinished... Oh, an I did, unfinished... I did some reworking since the last episode. Oh, okay. Of, uh, um, I got rid of the Y, and I realized if I rearranged the, um, the back, uh, the two side siding switching areas i, I want to say shunting so bad but i'm trying to correct <laughs> good, myself That's good like, yes he's learning everyone <laughs> no i'm not learning it's a problem it's peer pressure okay it's bad well Don't i mean that's, peer pressure that's that's fine but anyway I yeah guess. so I, I changed the two switching areas and i realized instead of making the bow yards if i have them so like i don't know what they're called like trapezoidal yards where it, like they the input and output directions are the same angle then you end up with like a 43 to 45 meter radius curve at the back oh, of nice. this okay okay so it's enough to get like a nice loop that doesn't so really So we're stuck. doing a turn back loop, which I mean might have been. I mean, there are times that those do exist. So that's fine. I'm fine with that. Yeah, it's it's I realize this corner here is just as steep as the corner in the back. So it actually isn't that bad. And uh, it's kind of it's kind of clean for this just because it is an end of line industry. You don't really need much. Gotcha. And gotcha. Then that other that other track will eventually go to like the oil refinery and stuff. But it's a secret. Can't talk about it. Shh. Oh boy, I'm I'm excited to learn secrets. He he hasn't even told me everyone. So <laughs> no, I'm I'm like I'm working on a secret project. It's well, uh, maybe we'll catch that next time or something, or or maybe one yeah, of the next time. I don't know how. Oh, how yeah, much? Easy, 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 uh, easy, easy. Con, hold con, on a minute. Con, con, con. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me just. It's <laughs> not use break. your brakes, sir. I am please, using my brakes, please. sir. Okay, there it is. Uh, we have an issue, sir. Oh, we're we're we we don't have space to store all this lumber. Well, yeah. we can just leave the loaded cars here. Like that's we'll that's a thing. The, we can just bring the rest back to the freight depot. Honestly, just sell it. Or we could do that too. That's that's fine. We just need the money. Like Fill let's be real. We just need we just need money. It's true. That's true. Anyway, um, is. the the last of the Kenosha thing is that the uh, the engineer was reportedly drunk. Uh, oh, so perfect. That was yeah, why he binned it. So smells like Kenosha is uh, in reference to any time there would be hard liquor uh, around or whatever near 346, we would joke that she was going, why does it smell like Kenosha? Because that was the last oh, time gotcha. she smelled it. Um, and that ended up being a song in the original Railroads Online soundtrack that I did before Kime got rid of it. But uh, but the one that gets really, really fast and then the train derails and uh, we edit it in over every train derailment I do because, uh, because funny and it's dumb and it was a dumb inside joke of a song. Uh, and it's just become this bit of internet culture, and I don't even know what to think about that. It's hilarious, so I'm here for it. All right, you're gonna have to tell me when. Uh, when yeah, we're stop. we're about halfway, so we're gonna get about eight cars unloaded, I think. And six, you get a hundred total, right? Fifty total. Yeah, fifty. We can unload fifty. So here, six. So. Yeah, we can unload. We can unload eight cars because then it's forty-eight. Yeah, yeah. So keep it going that speed. That speed's good. The funny thing that uh, that I'm laughing about is, speaking of other things I did for Rods of Line, the chuffs that he added are actually chuffs that I sent Kume like two years ago. I made a bunch of single chuffs for him to implement sometime like this. So I'm happy that he did. Uh, and then we get synchronized smoke. That's cool. I just hope he makes it 
so that every choo-choo does the proper amount of chuffs for their uh, their speed. Because I've heard that like the shea doesn't make sense either, but some of the rest of them do. So, but uh, yeah, you're welcome, everyone. Uh, I made those chuffs. I'm not a part of the team anymore, of course, but uh, I did that. So we got 48. So let's go to the freight depot, con. Take them ahead. Heck. Full speed! Full speed ahead! Full canvas! Always responsible to keep the load on the very back of the train. That's always the best best way to get things done. Oh, dude, it's this fine. It's actually kind of convenient because we can it's just fine. use this train. We're going to go past the freight depot and then we can just go straight up the hump line and hump in reverse and it'll all be totally not proper. I feel like yeah, you would never hump with the tender, tender first, but you know. Yeah, it's not ideal because then you uh, you have to carry the water the highest because you'd be at risk of exposing the crown sheet if you're going tender first. But I mean, it's right. it's fine. It's, a, it's just a and 10% you'd also grade. you'd also have to uh, have a tender that's strong enough to actually push and not just. <laughs> well, I mean, the tender's got to be able to take the load of the whole train, so that's not. But I really thought tenders an issue, under but... compression kind of suck a little bit. Um, they suck because they, they hunt and hit into the engine if they don't have buffers, but un otherwise, I mean, like, there's plenty of times where tenders have run in compression. Most of them ended up getting steel frames uh, or reinforced wood frames, although in this era they were probably all wood frame, but you would right. be surprised if you've never looked at it, Con, because, I mean, I don't know how much you ran into the structural properties of white oak, but uh, white oak is actually really, really, really strong, particularly in compression, and that's what most of the structural components of locomotives In case you didn't know, Heist, I actually have a diagram on my computer of strengths of woods. Do you so, really? Well, wow. I had one at one point, yeah. Like birchwood. <laughs> like birchwood is one of the weakest, and like oaks are strong. Maples are kind of in the middle. Pines are okay, but like usually pretty soft. Yeah. Yeah. That was definitely. I, I, um, I, I, I took material science once. Look, right? Yeah, but it's it's not often that anyone needs to worry about the material science of like, of certain kinds of woods anymore, right? Because if, okay, it's a wood building, well, then you're making it out of dimensional lumber that's just a thing, and then people know how to work with it, right? Yeah, and, and dimensional lumber is just like, yeah, it's cut it's from a, a two tree by that's four and, and we just, times the size. And... We assume that the two by four is this, and there you go. Boom, done, sold. Yeah. Uh, versus like, oh yeah, no, the tender's ensel is made out of white oak, and we had to do this, and blah blah blah. And it's well, you know, and then you've we got all the, the time. you've got all the pressure treatments with wood that people do nowadays as well, right? So it's like wood is not just like a, you know you don't just cut down a log and boom, that's your house. You know what I mean? Exactly, like there's, exactly. There's a lot of science that goes into it. Yeah. <clears throat> well, that's exciting. What a what a riveting riveting adventure. Indeed, yeah. It's funny that we can't actually fit all this, but um. I guess while we go to unload, Con, uh, I had someone ask me a good question in my Discord to ask coal, for you. Actually. We just need coal, so I gotta finish my super secret project. So yeah, you do. Coal. Yeah, you do. Yeah, so nice someone story. asked me uh, to ask you in my YouTube uh -huh. comments, what would I like about Scrap Mechanic? And when are we gonna play together? Because I've, like about I've never mechanic? played it. I've seen a couple of videos that you've sent me of stuff you've made, but I don't know how it works. I don't know what goes into it. I've never really di dove you into like it. Hours and 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 hours trying to figure out one basic thing. You'll love scrap mechanic. So okay, it's it's a it's a great building game for what it is. Like if you want to build stuff, but like it, I mean you're a mechanical engineer, so you might like. I enjoyed scrap mechanic because of the mechanical aspect of things. And okay. uh, at some point in time, I will take a long time to figure out how to set up a proper, like I made a wall shirts valve mechanism in Scrap Mechanic and it worked. So like it was, you know, it didn't use steam to power it, but like it showed the motions and how you can, you know, manipulate a wall shirts. There's like a little drawbar and I showed that you can manipulate this drawbar up and down, which changes the timing, which changes the wheel from forward to reverse, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's exactly like it would work, except, you know, the scale's a little bit off and all that. So sure, that's cool. And like, it's cool to make mechanical systems like that. But there is a lot of like, like Railroads Online has jank physics and so does Scrap Mechanics. So there's okay. a lot of like, learning curve to get around the jankiness you know uh, like yeah to make... so it's so it's kind of like gary's mod in that aspect yeah huh? so it's like you can make like a cool car or a cool truck but it's probably going to drive really bad unless you know the physics and how that behaves you know what i mean like it's... gotcha you got to learn the not the real physics yeah. but the game physics trains, to make anything happen trains and scrap mechanic are are a little difficult just because um as you make something more and more complex it gets more and more laggy 
And so if you want to put down, you can, there's mods you can use to put down like custom rail tiles, which like have rails set out and pre-positioned spots and stuff. And that's great. But if you make a train and you try and attach it with like three or four cars, it will be very laggy just because of all like the interactions of all the pins and everything. It's a lot of you know? physics to do. Yeah. Yeah. Like every wheel is on its own bearing. Every, every right. swivel point. Is so bearing, like, I know, I know in Gary's mod that like a lot of people end up like turning off collisions and they weld stuff together and, and uh, they parent stuff to stuff. So there's no physics being done except for like the wheel. Yeah, it and this is now all the train body. That way. Ooh, no, okay. <laughs> is, everything is, everything has physics with everything. So if yeah. you have a parent and you have a child smacking the parent, the child will smack the parent, which is cool for a lot of cool things. Like you could make all sorts of neat stuff, but there's a lot of calculations happening. They have a slider that lets you simplify the physics, but, um, it uh, it also makes the physics behave janky in some it, it, different jank. Yes, my favorite yeah, kind. Yeah, so like <laughs> yeah, so you gotta it's it's kind of I don't know it's it's cool. Is it it's a hundred percent? I I would there's no way I can argue that it's not worth the price. Like it is a hundred percent worth the price. It's a it's a cheap game relatively compared to like all these AAA titles, and you will get more than enough hours out of it for the price. Like, Got it. Hundred hundred percent. Um, that being said, there's a lot of jank. Okay. So, well, that uh, that could be fun. But I mean, I also have like almost three thousand something hours in it, so I mean, I'm probably not the best. I've got more hours than that in Team Fortress Two. Just saying. Yeah. So I'm probably not the best critique because like I would still play it no matter what because like I'm just used to the jank and it you know it doesn't the jank doesn't bother me anymore. You were forged by it. Yes. Yeah. I'm forged exactly. I'm forged by. Okay. The jank. We're all unloaded and Khan. I have twenty eight hundred and five dollars now. So we made like. Almost Wait, how much, a thousand how much bucks. Is it for an engine? How much is it we for an engine? Thirty six hundred for the Moscow, right? I think. Is it thirty? Really? Thirty six hundred? Yeah, so we're gonna have to run another train, so No, you know what we're gonna have to do? We're gonna have to buy two hoppers. Oh, we can do that then, too. Yeah. Because our coal mine has ninety coal, so we can buy two hoppers and then bring all the hoppers up to the coal mine and then deliver all the coal. But anyway, let's go hump, because we gotta hump. Let's go hump. I'm, I'm protecting the shove before we hump. Um, so I know nobody yeah. asked, but I figured I would tell a story because nobody Ooh. asked. Hey, Khan, can you can you tell us a story? Yeah, there you go. Perfect. No, so you were talking about like the the like the failures that you've seen at the railroad and stuff. You know, yeah. almost yeah, yeah. getting killed by an exploding bolt. I almost got Details. killed by a forklift once. So this. Oh, is dude. True story. <laughs> so like we yeah. So I was working and uh, in automotive, there's um, you know you have forklifts carrying racks and there's this thing called racks, right? And a rack is basically just a big metal square cage. And okay. it's not like a cage with mesh, but they're like a metal frame, basically. And they're always standard size, and they have pins in them so you can stack them on top of each other. And inside the rack, you have, like, these foam cutouts or whatever for holding parts, right? Fo they're usually different shapes, sizes. Some of them are just tray racks, where it's just, like, two flat shelves with, like, plastic lining. And you just, like, rest parts on each other. Um, or some of them have, like, actual molded foam, where each part is, like, in these foam things. And they're, the reason you use racks is no matter what the part is that's in the rack, the rack is a standard size. So it can right, always get right. packed, and you can have them in different aisles and whatever. So to move these around, you have forklifts. And racks have two forklift holes on either side, so you can grab them from either side. You can just lift them off the previous rack and, you know, move them around, right? And, uh... So I was I was walking in this forklift area. There's when every factory I've worked in, there's always like forklift areas and then there's pedestrian areas and you're not supposed to walk in the forklift areas unless you have to for some reason. Right. So I had to walk in the forklift area for some reason because I'm you know doing some whatever, checking something or whatever. And um when you do that, you wear a safety vest because all the forklift guys, you know, they want to be able to see you and everything else. But I'm also exactly. in, like, I'm a, yeah. I'm a paint engineer, so I'm also in, like, a completely blue, static-free paint suit. So it's really right. hard to miss me. Like, I'm, like, basically in these blue coveralls. Oh, we got to go to the hump yep, side Yeah, I'm getting the, getting the switch lined. Hopefully, if I can okay. beat you there. We lined. Go. Yep. Keep bringing them back. Um, but anyway, so so I'm, I'm in this, like, blue paint suit. I'm also in, like, you know, an orange safety vest on top of that. So it's like, there's no way you can miss me, right? And I've got, um, you know, steel-toed shoes on, all that nonsense. Safety glasses and all that. Um, but no no hard hats or anything, right? But we're I'm walking around, and I'm walking, and I'm walking behind this forklift. And I see this forklift, and he's trying to, like, deliver parts to the line. And... I'm behind him and I'm a little bit off to the left and I'm basically at the point where like I'm going to pass this forklift but a forklift if you've ever heard, seen a, a, a tall mast forklift right mm -hmm. the mast of a forklift is kind of these like black metal um 
it's like a black metal A-frame, right? Yeah. And there's yeah, like, yeah. usually they're nested. So it's usually three of them that are nested together with like a cable or a hydraulic system. A lot of them are cable, but some of them are hydraulic. And and basically it's like a cable that, that pulls the three nested, like telescopes them apart from each other, right? Okay. And that's how like 90% of forklifts gain height. Now, the obvious problem with that is if you ever have one of those like extending telescopes as a kid, if you pull them right to the very edge, there's very little telescope that's left in, you know, the the, the next piece, right? So it's easy for you to like take what, like, like if you, I, I don't know how to explain this. You know what I mean though, right? Like if you telescope a piece out, like you have a, you have like a tube inside a tube and you pull them to the very edge where it's like right about to come out like the very limit of it there's very little like leftover tube so it's very easy to bend the two tubes Correct. right Relative yes yeah yeah right so this forklift's carrying a, a rack full of super heavy parts and for some reason pulled it off the top shelf mast is at the tallest height and I like out of the corner of my eye, I look and before I walked in front of this forklift, I look and I see the top section of the mast. Like there's three sections. I see the top section is forward by like half an inch or an inch compared to the one below it. So I stopped moving. And then two seconds later, right in front of me, this rack falls down, crashes to the floor, oh super loud and parts everywhere. The forklift like completely bends in half. The whole mask was down. And I'm like six feet from getting crushed from this rack. And I was like, well, could have died today if I didn't look up. Like, yep. it was. <laughs> Keep yeah. your head on a swivel, folks. There's your It was one of those rubbers. Like, thank God I noticed that thing was freaking leaning. Because he was right at, like, the limit of the height. So it just wasn't enough material to hold the right. weight of the so rack. He, he was the exceeding the, the load limit of the forklift, or he didn't get the load far enough on the rack or on the Or the, to, the forklift yeah. was just overextended for whatever reason, right? Right, like, with right. The, but yeah, the whole the whole mast of the forklift bent in half, came down with the rack on it, parts everywhere. Oh yeah, it was a nightmare. That's a bad day. But hey, and I was you're like, still cool. here. I'm I'm glad I I looked and yeah. So that was that was fun. That no was a good kidding. Day. Yeah, that's uh that's don't die in an industrial accident if you can avoid it, folks. Make sure you're uh, taking the safe course of action. It's super important. Oh, you already unpinned yourself. Look at you. Yeah. Oh no! You just gotta. If you ever work in a factory, it's, I loved working in factories. It was great. It was a fantastic. I mean, it was it was super um, cool, super fun. It's yeah, a cool for sure. Experience, but like, did you set the hump switches too? Are we humped? Uh, I mean, we looked like we were lined all the way to the left, which is where these cars right, go, right? We are. So. We'll find out. But yeah, it was super fun working in factories and stuff. It's just you you have to be so careful. Like you always have to watch out for everything because it's. Uh... You never know what could go wrong or oh, what yeah, could happen, just... and the the second you get complacent and not pay attention. Yeah, is when it, you get maimed or dead or whatever. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, it was fun times. I've seen some. I've seen some fun stuff. We'll have to talk about it some other time. Ask me the story next time because the oh, last man. time you talked about drunk grizzly bears. Here, here we go. Here's this here's your not preview. About, this is not about railroads, unfortunately. It's not railroads talk. Um, but ask me the story of the five horsepower motor that crushed four and a half cars. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it's a good story. <laughs> Five there was a five so horsepower. So I'm not even joking. It was a five very, horsepower motor. That very big motor that spins. Cars. Spins really slow, right? Very, very big five horsepower motor that spins very slow. But okay. yes, and it's All right, geared I guess like the, crazy. I guess the plot. Yes. But it is a five horsepower motor that I'm not even. It crushed like literally four and a half cars. It was oh awesome. Oh my god. It was terrible. But like, yeah, yeah that's was, uh, next time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was good times. It was it was fun. Uh, you know, hopefully uh, none of the people that I used to work with. Uh, you know, watch watch my channel. Maybe they do. And then, and then Who knows? My That's brother fine. one time he he messages me. He's like, "Are you sure you should talk about stuff that happened in factories you worked at?" And I'm like, "I don't know. Are they gonna like what are they gonna, gonna sue me for telling stories?" I mean, I don't <laughs> think anything's private, right? I don't think so. <laughs> I didn't I didn't do anything. You know, nothing's illegal and yeah, if it's like happen. a super illegal thing that you actively did or somebody actively did, and then you're like doxing their illegal activities okay maybe somebody gets mad but like yeah. if it's just crap that happens man i mean that's it's crap that happens yeah, I mean, on the crap so i think that's what exactly crap happens on the crap that's just sort of the way it is but yeah there we go um next episode we're gonna i think we gotta get some coal we need we need another buy some uh, hoppers run some coal make some yeah. money yeah uh, maybe 100%. maybe see your secret thing i don't even know what it is I hope I get it done before okay. we record next. Okay. I'm going to have to work okay. extra diligently. It is proving to be difficult, mainly because uh, you can't float foundations in the air anymore. You have to have a base for you them. You just got to stack them on top of each other. Yeah, yeah. and so you got to like get the right stack for it to work. That's, that's just the frustrating part of it. So I'm just trying to work through that because uh, floating track is not a thing. So... But yeah, let us know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure you, of course, uh, you know hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, check out Heist's channel. 
And check remember, out Khan's channel too. Yeah, TV. remember five horsepower motor, four and a half cars. It's very important. Many, many dunk crush sounds. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, five horsepower motor, man. You know, you ever thought five horsepower wasn't enough? It's just uh, I'll tell you, you're wrong, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, I'm excited for this one. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. See you all later. Bye.